Hello and welcome to episode 4, we're up to episode 4 now of the Toffee Podcast. Uh, This episode we're focusing, I say focusing, but we tend to wander off, but the aim was to discuss analog versus digital and we left that pretty pretty broad in this uh, this discussion just to see what on earth would come out of it this time we're covering a swathe of topics including is a thermal flask analog or digital uh, the different joys in digital versus analog photography cinema film audio on vinyl or tape versus mp3 and we get into quite a heated debate about the second exits of roundabouts so If that sounds like the kind of stuff you'd find interesting, then settle in. Uh, For the vast majority of you, this ain't for you. This, I'm going to say this week, but we don't do this weekly. But this episode uh, is, uh, we've gone for digital versus analog. And we've left that as broad as possible because we know it's going to wander off somewhere as it usually does. But the, the starting point is, yeah, analog versus digital. What, what do we think? Well, we are doing this over a wet string and two, uh, some tin cans. So uh, <laughs> uh, analog it, it, has got to be the preferred method, obviously. <laughs> it does have that kind of production value to it, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, I, f- I finally found it on YouTube. Oh, yeah, you I moved moved the channel. yeah, I'm yeah, going to keep I... moving it every week so you can't. <laughs> I've got eight uh, yeah, YouTube we channels. We've got more than through. one video now. We've got two. There are two. two. Oh wow! I listened yeah. to one of them. Although, uh, one of by the, the time, by the time, by the time this, this episode goes out, we may have three. So uh, we're That's recording great. this. The back end of 2020. I don't know what the date is. Uh, yeah 2020 is kind of merged into one one day <laughs> very uh, long very <laughs> long day yeah. oh december the 29th of december it is the 29th of december when we're recording this and it may well be i don't know july by the time it's published <laughs> just for some context there which year oh sorry yeah, i'm well, not that it ties down to anything but you know. yeah don't don't yeah try and commit too much so, we're so topical, though it's worth noting exactly when they take place. Uh, indeed, all our uh, information is up to date uh, and uh, relevant to the current time period <laughs> that we are living in. It does make me Obviously, wonder. There could be a revolution in the digital world. It's going to be some kind of revolution at some point if I can't get out of this house. <laughs> <laughs> well, his tone's changed. <laughs> well, it's because I'm on the whiskey tonight. Ooh, Christmas present. I made a flask of tea. I don't know why I have a tea, pot, tea, but I made a flask <laughs> today. <laughs> I said I'm on the whiskey, and he just held up a flask. I was expecting him to say, like, "Me too." <laughs> <laughs> I like to keep it warm. <laughs> could be ice. Yeah, you... Could just be on ice. If I, if I drink a whole liter of iced whiskey in one go, then I think the cold makes me feel unwell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the cold. That's it's that's cold. That's what, yeah. <laughs> That's that's one thing that I've noticed as it marks the passage of time is that whiskey has become a heck of a lot easier to drink. <laughs> I, re- I remember when it was it was difficult. That's because you've now got old whiskey rather than new whiskey. <laughs> it's, it's still the same bottle of whiskey. It's, no, it isn't. It's just got better with age. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not the same bottle. Yeah, it used it used to be difficult to drink whiskey. Now it's difficult to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just fall asleep? No. Happens to me. No. <laughs> so I'm drinking tea. I fall asleep if I don't. <laughs> One drink and I start to fall asleep. And you get down to like four or five and like you start to perking up again. But it's that transition period that's quite hard to, to deal with. <laughs> Got to get over the hump. <laughs> yeah. The snooze barrier. Exactly. <laughs> like a quaalude. <laughs> any of this? Any of this related to ag- an- analog or digital? Have we? Have we found a way in yet? Not yet. We just have to keep digging. We'll find. It, we'll find it there. Is a thermos? Is a thermos analog? I feel like this. This is a proper Stanley one, and the reason I got this one, which was more expensive than most of the others, was because I had to pay more to get the kind of top that isn't one of those stupid pressy tops that you oh, just screw soup. it and then you can yeah. pour soup in it. You can put 
chicken broth. You can put whatever you want in it. Yeah. It doesn't spill. It doesn't leak. It keeps it really hot. Instead of, I've had maybe two other ones, like cheapo ones, and they had those little, you press it and then you can pour, and they just leak. And they're really hard to clean. So th this is my analog flask. I don't know how digital you can get with a flask. But this well, is, it, is, it has got options, hasn't it? it? Rather than digital, it's not just open or closed. You can... I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm reaching at straws here. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's not some... hot or cold. It, it accepts any temperature you're putting in. Maybe my <laughs> archaic flask is kind of more digital in that it's either, it really is kind of open or closed. I mean, it has a floor <laughs> in between. Can you not just slightly unscrew it? Because we used to have a, one you could slightly unscrew and pour. Yeah, yeah, you open can... all the, yeah. You do have some control some, over the flow. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, we are still fishing for sponsors. So if Stanley are out there, then we like your uh, digital approach to the lid on your <laughs> thermos flask. Do they own Irwin these days? Or do Irwin own Stanley? Because um, I really um, like Irwin clamps. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes stanley give, give us a shot give, give us a shout um we, we're really going we all love... out for the uh random factor on this episode i feel i mean like <laughs> we're five and a half minutes in and we've covered about 10 topics <laughs> so this is tenuous but bear with me <laughs> i bought the flask to take out with me not to sit in my lounge and drink tea from a flask for some, <laughs> for some reason that seemed like a good idea <laughs> It's because I can make one giant flask of tea and then I don't have to move for hours. So I've got the flask to take out with me and I'm trying to persuade you to go out camping in, in the near future and take some photographs late at night. Which, of course, of you I will be tea. doing. Of me drinking tea, which I will be doing on a film in the camera. Nude. <laughs> You'll be doing on a film camera, hey. Yeah. Like your work. Like your work, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm surrounded by, not quite. I have several film cameras in the room with me. Uh, I have one. From... Yeah. I, I have a few. I'll admit I have a few. <laughs> Definitely have I more have digital, digital cameras. cameras as well, but they're all sort of accidentally here. Apart from the one that I'm using to talk to you guys, there's a couple on my phone, another on my laptop. Uh, there's at least a couple over there uh, on the camera shelf. Yeah, I've got at least five digital cameras Four of which are within reach. What, what do you feel you get from the analog camera versus the digital camera? I mean, why why would you choose one over the other? But why do you think on that Very one? Very hard to answer. <laughs> See, I, I really there is... prefer film. There's the whole, I've taken a photo, I've no idea what it looks like until I get that film developed. So there's some sort of adventure in it i suppose yeah. yeah like here's this i'm gonna try and capture this moment in time and will i be successful i don't know yeah and there's obviously a desire then to better yourself to be able to take the photo that you want to capture at that point so you don't waste your money yep mm. i like that and i, I like uh you, you almost always not always but Usually you get the film them printed as well, so you normally get a set of photographs. I've got a box of photographs over in the corner, and I, just the other day I was looking. I, I moved it around to get some stuff out, and had a little flick through, and I I never do that with the digital photographs I've got. Uh, I think Katie does occasionally, but only really to reorganise them into a way that would make them easier to look at if she wanted to for some reason. But but with the uh, with film photographs, I mean, I've had some some from my parents, some from my grandparents even, that have just lasted and you just pick up and look at and I, I just I like them better. You can print mm -hmm. out digital ones as well, of course. No. It's just that I, I don't. I'm not forced to, so I generally don't. Well, you're not forced to have physical photos developed. You can just get it straight onto a CD. Yeah, it's true. But I generally do. So it's... But yeah, yeah, yeah. Without it being sort of true, it's kind of your. It, it nudges you in that direction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I remember it like a few. Oh, I say a few years ago. It's probably several years ago. And I, when uh, me and Rye went around York doing um, analog photography on a digital camera. Remember that one? Yeah. 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 It, it was. Flogged. We stuck tiny memory cards in, <laughs> and didn't look at our pictures after we'd taken them. 
Yeah, I turned the back screen off on the camera. I think yeah. I had a, a 256 megabyte card, <laughs> SD card. Yeah, yeah. And it took 12? 10 or yeah, 12. Yeah, it wasn't many. It was, it was a few, few uh, yeah, I turned the quality up to maximum and raw and, and it was, don't look at the, the photo. They were terrible. <laughs> 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 they, they weren't brilliant. But it was a cool exercise. And yeah, yeah. I, I, I have used film, ca- I've not used film cameras for a while because of the convenience factor, really. Mm. It's like, I can, I can get. I can get a decent quality out of my digital camera. So there's no real consideration there. And uh, you, can, you can make it an occasion. Like the, the actual act of taking a photo, you can make it more of an event like it is on, on film. It's just, I don't know, the analogs, there's just something cool about analog at the moment. I don't know why. <laughs> I do think it's at the moment. I do think it is definitely coming back a lot of things are coming in at the moment aren't they but i think, I think there's a, kind of they've been around forever the thing with digital oh. is like is it's it's everywhere like your phone your computer like signs now electric cars with ipads in them all your media comes through a smart tv so digital's it's just the way of things whereas analog's got this kind of uh magic trick thing to it like you put this paper in and it <laughs> it captures an image physically for you. It's funny, isn't it? How the sort of less less complicated one is the one that seems like magic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's because we don't understand it. Oh yeah, I-, I would say yes. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we, and, we could we could try and think about how each of them work, but I mean, the the film camera is quite simple, isn't it? Really. Oh, yes, but it's not like in yeah, operation. Yeah. It's simple. It's let open, open shutter, let light in, close shutter, roll on. Yeah. But like the actual process of turning light into a thing that is held within a camera is incredible. Like you got to get exactly the right blend of chemicals and the right substrate and and everything for it yeah. to work. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I agree. It's really clever. I, I don't want to trivialize it but compared to a digital camera i think there's more going on there yeah that's something that i'd not considered how do they develop photos these days in like high street photo shops do they still use chemical baths and everything or is it just a scanned negative into a photo printer i they must have they have to develop the negative first so they'd have to have chemicals for that but then at then I guess they just scan the negative and, and photo print it. I, I doubt they use an enlarger or anything like that. Yeah, it's scanned. For, uh... Scanned and printed. But the, the developing stuff, it's like one big machine. It's like a giant photocopier thing. They put it in you one just... end and it, it runs through the, the things inside. Like they can, I think they can get like a bit of a preview and they can tweak some of the timing of the, the chemicals for right. it, um, to change the colours and the, the exposure of some of the, the things. But it's done per roll. So it's like an, they have to average it over the whole roll. <laughs> so if your first one's quite bright and they want to tone it down, then you've got a slightly darker one that's going to be even darker. And, okay. mm. Yeah, and that's terrible for me because I, uh, although there's only 24 or 36, on, on normally I've got 35 mil rolls. So normally there's that kind of number. I often don't use a roll up, and I'll, it might be from several different places in really different lights. And... <clears throat> Yeah, God knows what when I get them. It, again, in the in the interest of not getting sponsors, I once took a roll of film to Boots <laughs> because uh, <laughs> this was back in the early days before I knew of anywhere that I could actually take it. It was halfway decent. Um, I took it to Boots and they they ran it through the thing, and more of my photos were spliced. They like cut through the middle. It had mistimed on the negative, and it was the actual negative had to have been cut. To fit in their little boots pouch that they sent you back with, it's like you've you've cut up like one in five of my photos. <laughs> it's like one in six. Yeah, I've like that before. That. Really? So then, whenever I got them developed anywhere else, I says like, don't cut the roll. <clears throat> just give me it back. Yeah. Yeah. Like just develop. Don't cut. And I'll I'll, I'll scan it at home if I ever want to. Mm. 
I've never done yeah, any I... like enlarging and that kind of stuff because not not got the setup for it. It's on my mind to have a go at that this year. I've never done it either. I've uh, yeah, I've never tried it. I've never really read about it, but I think maybe this year I'm going to have a go. Build myself mm. a little uh, little room in my shed. My shed's pretty light proof, so I'll have a go at it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, when I was looking through the big box of photographs, I, I got loads from the uh, Diana Mini, the little plastic one that can do split frame ones. And so at some point, I took loads of photographs, and then for years, I've not really used any. I, I've got that Nikon F3 that I, I've barely used at all. I, I used the, the Kodak one, the Rangefinder one, quite a bit. Got loads of rolls of that. I've hardly taken any with the Nikon one, which is probably the best camera I've owned. Can I give you a lens for that? Yep. Oh, that's where it is. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yep. What else have I got? I've got a camera of Jack's. What's that one in, my, in the bag? Oh, uh, uh, Minolta. Yeah, I've not played with it yet. I don't know the number right. It works. It's like, it's one of those weird crossover things. It's like a, it takes film, but it's like electric, like motor driven and yeah. that kind of yeah. stuff. I was like, what is this? <laughs> bastardization of technologies here <laughs> what's going on um i like I, the first time i used a medium format was a film camera and there's just something about the look of medium format that i really really like there's a definite look to it and i thought i could only get that in the film because the medium format digital cameras are ridiculously expensive and uh, I even looked at ways you could fake it on a standard format digital camera. There's a weird look to it, and I thought it's difficult to describe, but it, it's basically like a shallow depth of field with a wide field of view. It's normally on a, on a normal. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Yeah, because normally on a, like a standard full frame, like a 35 mil. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you have a wide angle lens, you can't get as shallow a depth of field. Um, but you can on a medium format. I, I quite like that. So I, I, I got a medium. Okay. <laughs> the first time I developed one of those, it was kind of weird. I had weird film as well. Have you had that slide film? The negatives actually are positive. You develop the negative, and it is, it's already a positive. Okay. So you, you can look through it. It's for, it's for doing, like, projection slides and things. You can, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can look through it, and it's already the picture. And that's weird, looking at the actual negative, because it's not a negative mm. anyway. But, like, the light comes through it, and it, it just looks different to, like, a picture where the light comes off of it. Kind of get what I mean? There's there's some there's some cool uh, some cool tricks and magic to the analog film stuff, but uh, does does any of that translate over to like the music? I, I'm gonna I want to get into the uh, audio debate with Ryan on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you know you think I have okay, opinions. <laughs> I think you might have opinions, and I think you know that I'm a kind of a deeply closeted hipster, so. I mean, it's it's not very deeply closeted these days, is it? It's... You can't say that. <laughs> you can't say that to me. You know. Well, you're just booking the trend of uh, of being deeply closeted. <laughs> I am. I am deeply closeted as a hipster. <laughs> I'm not a hipster. Okay. <laughs> you just store a lot of clothes? I don't... <laughs> not hipster clothes. No, no. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Then, so analog uh, versus digital music. Yeah. Replication. Yeah. yeah, we'll say yeah, we'll say in the like the recorded playing back in your home kind of stuff. I mean that I don't think there's any debate over seeing a live performance versus a recorded performance. Um it depends what you're going for. If you can get if you can get over that um you know the the sense of the event. You know, there's like something extra from being somewhere, you know, that you, mm. it, it's an occasion and you're like, you get everything sensory 
about it that adds to the whole experience of the music. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah if definitely. You, but if you could limit that purely to the sound. Well, like there's some versions of songs that I prefer the live recording of rather than the studio pr recording of. Because um, it's just a completely different atmosphere and energy you generally get from a live performance than you do from a studio performance. But then there are often times where the studio version is far superior to a live version because of the technicality of the piece or whatever that's just not only impossible to pull off live without just playing back tracks for everything. Um, yeah, or spending way more money than they want to on bringing in extra musicians or whatever to play on the tour. So it was a, what, what about just to move, to move it away from... Um, just to move the conversation towards some controversy, what what do you what do you say to someone that says, "Oh, I only buy vinyl"? It's, if that it's is their better. choice, it's just better. Oh, okay, right. It's just better. Yeah, I'm saying I'm saying vinyl is better than a, a, a WAV file. There you go. In what way? Better. When you hear it, it's like that's better. I don't know. I, I can't say I've ever actually listened to a <laughs> final, to be honest. I probably have, because but I've not been aware. The trouble of it. with analog stuff is, especially playing it back, like vinyl, especially, like the result, there's mechanical movements and stuff in that involved in the getting the recording from the device into sound. So there are always things in the way of reproducing what's on the vinyl so you could quite possibly say that the recording on the vinyl is superior but how do you then translate that into sound can you do that in a superior superior way because the needle bounces you can get dust in the cracks uh and the and the divots and stuff of the of the vinyl so can you claim that it's a better from a audio standpoint I don't personally think so. Could you claim it is a better experience? Certainly could. It's a whole thing where, you know, you've got to carefully take it out of its sleeve, place it on the on the machine, get the needle lined up in the right place. It's it's a, an experience. It's not just a press play. There's some ritual to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's more than just putting some music on. It's a right, I am going to set some time aside to do this because it is a process. It's not just press play on my phone and whatever comes out, comes out. But in terms of fidelity of recording, I can't say that, that a vinyl is better than a digital recording. Yeah, I can, I can see where um, like having a digital recording of something, you, you're going to get more accuracy. Of, mm -hmm. the, of the original. Uh, yeah. But what about... Um... But, but there is the whole thing, like with guitars, a lot of guitar sounds that people want can only really be generated by analog circuitry. They can be emulated to a certain extent, but most people will find that they want the analog sound and the only way to do that properly is with analog circuitry. So you get harmonics that are developed in tubes and or valves, depending on where you're from, that are really hard to do in a digital way. So in that regard, the analog solution to guitar amplifiers or effects or whatever is quite often superior to the digital one in terms of the sound that people want to get out of it perverse in a way isn't it like you, you have a similar thing with like uh, cinema there's a you have a group of people that say film is like analog film chemical mm. film is better than digital capture um and you can debate that either way <clears throat> whichever you want but at the end of the day with with that it comes down to a digital workflow and a digital process at some point it's turned into digital yeah, data easy. There's and like, very few people cutting film up and sticking it back together. Yeah, it's just not cost effective and it takes a hell of a lot of time and it's 
yeah, the quality of the thing coming out at the end isn't isn't as clean. I say clean. Um, it's like it was similar with music, like you, what you were saying. Like the majority of traditional musical instruments are analog. It's a vibrating string or a skin yeah. or tube um, resonating tube, frequencies. Yeah, yeah, and that's captured and it has to be captured at some point. Yeah. Though I saw, I think wasn't it uh, Jack White did a. The, he, he like set a record, <laughs> a record, but dum dum, for the the fastest turnaround from live performance to finished vinyl. Oh, did he do it at the at the gig? Yeah, so it, they, did, they, he had a printing press out back, and he had a guy um, cutting the the record on a lathe. It's like a lathe, isn't it? It cuts on. It's, yeah, it's a weird platter kind of lathe thing. They had a guy cutting it there and then when he was doing the performance. Mm. And so he did a few songs that would fit on this um, disc. And yeah. then he continued the concert while they sent this away to the, the local place. Like they, they careered mm. it there themselves and they got it. It's a whole pressed. cool process to it. Like it's like mm. uh, plated and then pressed and then yep. they, they press out the 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 vinyls and then he got them sent back and they got back to the concert before he'd finished and so he could and were people right. buying it at the end. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a cool thing but um uh, so that i think that was well it, it can't have been it can't have been it, it is analog all the way through isn't it because the mics uh, well it depends on how they did it because most big tours and stuff use a digital desk these days. It was a, it was a small venue. It was like a little venue. Uh, record, it, it could record have shop. Been, it could have been an analog system, um, but how did they get the information from the microphones into the lathe or whatever? Yeah. I, d I doubt they were doing it by hand. I mean, it's possible. Don't know. Um, so I see that much of it. I guess it'd be like mixed as well, wouldn't it? So yeah. Are they analog mixes, digital you, mixes? You can get them. Uh, you, you, yeah, still can get them. Um, but yeah. And I imagine if they were doing that, then it probably was an analog desk with everything associated with it. Mm. Um, yeah. but, but the convenience of digital is immense. Like going back to the guitar thing, like... Yes, the, most guitarists want that analog sound, but very few can afford it, or the inconvenience of having to transport a fragile piece of equipment around rather than a solid state amplifier, effect pedal, whatever. It's all in the how much do you want to spend to make this easy. Another one I saw I found quite interesting because I my my taste in music is kind of. Uh expanded the past mm -hmm. few years i used to be very focused on like indie rock and that kind of stuff and i've now moved out into lots of other areas like um even some edm stuff yeah you know, that kind of thing and um one of the guys in there you know it's all very digital they can they can produce it on a laptop basically some of them oh yeah yeah but uh, some of them still like the uh, the analog uh, synths. And they've yes. got this big wall of randomly plugging wires in across other stuff to generate these weird sounds. Yeah. That they then kind of capture and record, and use as samples, basically. I think. Mm. In the in their other stuff, so that's kind of I find that kind of stuff interesting. That there's kind of a mix there. But. Uh, yeah, so like, yeah, there are very few of those around these days. I'm not sure how many have been actually been manufactured, or whether it's all old stock that's been. I think there are some redone. new, as as, as the yeah. similar way to like with photography, the way that the film started coming back, where it starts coming back in this popularity. You know, you get new markets forming and people that want to make the stuff, so they're getting new cameras made that are analog. You, mm. The similar thing there. There's some new little synths been made um 
but they, they, they use like transistors and stuff rather than like the, the tubes or the valves yeah 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 so they're, exactly. they're, so they're pretty small little things but it's become a but then you could get a plug-in that does that sounds 90 percent as good that takes uh -huh. up zero space on your desk and he's always with you wherever you go if it's on the laptop. There's that thing though, isn't it? There's like maybe 0.1% of people will be able to hear well, the difference. That's the other thing, is how much is it worth to the customer? Like, will they care whether you recorded this on a 1968 Fender or you recorded it straight into your computer using a 25 quid converter box? As long as it sounds good to them, does it matter? Possibly for the creative process of the person feeling good as they're doing it and pouring more of their heart and soul into it. Yeah, I can I can see that. But does it does it sell better if it's made on old proper equipment or a computer? I find that an interesting thing, though. You were talking about, like, from the perspective of the creator. Mm. Like, because with any kind of art, it's like being able to follow your um, inspiration and your, um, what's the word? Like intrigue. You're intrigued mm -hmm. by something and you want to explore it, that kind of stuff. Being able to do that, I think that that brings something to a creation that's kind of beyond what it's actually made from um yeah like people will generally do a better job if they enjoy and like what they're doing rather than they're compromising every here there and everywhere to get the job done yeah yeah okay. what are, just just uh just branching out a little bit again. The other one I've got written down here is like ebook, ebook market versus bookstore. Is that does that count? Does that does that fit with your theme? We, of we covered this in, uh, in one of our previous episodes. <laughs> I'm sure we we uh, got a we've little done, bit. Into we've this. done reading versus watching. That was episode one. You can catch on the the channel. <laughs> We might have covered ebooks versus reading, but I don't think we went into yeah. the. <laughs> it's it's talk. Like, I like I like books. Like I like feeling of holding a book, but it's a lot easier to carry around a library <laughs> on an ebook <laughs> than it is to carry around a stack of books. But then, how often do you need to carry a stack of books around? Generally, it's just the one book. You need to carry around with you as you're reading it. Unless you're going away for multiple months. You only really need one book at a time. My, my current everyday carry book is quite sizable. It's like 900 pages of... <laughs> yeah, yeah. 900 pages of Stephen King. I suppose Being it's Stephen a lot easier King. to uh, waterproof an e-book reader than it is to... <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, but your, your physical book doesn't go and change the cover on you because there's a new updated cover version coming out. It doesn't. It doesn't try. No. And, like it doesn't try and plonk an advert in the middle of the story for you <laughs> because you because you cheaped out on the ebook and thought eh, ads when ads subsidized ebook won't be too bad. E-reader, sorry, won't be too bad. Other uh -huh. saying that, I have got a physical book. For, I got one for Christmas, and it, like in within the index at the back of the book, there's like a page of index, and then there's like a full page advert. <laughs> That's like yeah, mm. you quite have to get adverts for the next in the series. Well, it, is, it was a it was a paragliding book that I got. It was like a a bit of a, a textbook, a bit of a textbook. So in in the back, there's like adverts for kit and wings and holidays yeah. <laughs> going back to the covers thing though mm. I find it really annoying that they change the physical book covers when they do a republish of it Right. It's like, I'd quite like to have a set of books with matching covers from the yeah. series but then 
if you trying to get a historical set like that aren't published anymore, you've got to really look and find the one that matches the ones that you've already bought. And you can be there for months trying to find the one that matches into the set. Why do they change it? Make it better. <sighs> yeah. I did so in uh, Waterstones when when we were allowed to visit bookshops. Uh, they're like um, Asimov uh, series. They'd like relaunched it with like the original, yeah. some of the original. Yeah, but I bet it's not the original artwork, is it? But It'll be it tweaked says, and different. It's, it says original artwork. <laughs> we'll put a board around it with original artwork on it or something. Yeah, true. Big sticker. <laughs> Although sometimes they're tricky and it says original 1952 artwork. Yeah. When it first came out in 1946. <laughs> uh, although my digital downloads for films on uh, Google Movies, whatever it's called these days, like they keep mm -hmm. changing the cover art. I think it's like, oh, now your purchase has been upgraded to 4K and there's a new cover. I feel like you complained about this last time. As well. I do. Well, it, it irks me. <laughs> It, it's, it's something that stays with me. I, I will remember this for years. <laughs> I, I, I could quite comfortably come back to this in a decade and still be as peeved. <laughs> the, the but I, I do quite like um, download films, whatever, for films that I don't really want to own, <laughs> but I want to watch. Example? Um... You don't are want they, to admit them. Are they I'm 18 sure. rated? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to own it. I don't want to leave this lying around. <laughs> where's, 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 how do I? Yeah, I, I know what you mean, though. I mean, the, it, it's cheaper, isn't it, to get a digital copy of something instead of going yeah. on the real thing? And... <laughs> I have an idea that it's kind of more environmentally friendly, but I'm not sure that it actually works out that way in practice, especially because there's a, a good, million good different question. services streaming the different things. And every time I want to watch it, I have to stream it across a network, and it's been, uh, you know, it's been cached and buffered all over the place. And there's, I don't think it's really it probably doesn't work out that much better. I mean, from like simple power usage of watching that film across the world. Yeah. 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 But then, how much did it cost to sh in terms of shipping it across the world to where, from wherever it was produced to land at your doorstep yeah. and everything? Yeah, it's really hard to judge. So for a single use, then yes, yeah. <clears throat> but those films that you really like, you're going to rewatch. I was uh, I was thinking while I was struggling to get some combination of being able to hear you and speak to you working. But uh, <laughs> uh, maybe a way of thinking about it is if I could only choose one, like if I could only choose to have an e-book or a real book, I'd, I'd choose a real book. I mean, I, I'm not suggesting a single book, but uh, yeah. if I was only going to use one of that type of thing. And if I was only going to choose uh, a record or a CD or, uh, or a digital, then I think I'd probably choose a CD. Uh, I wouldn't choose a record, although I, I, I like... I, I sort of, I, I listen to a record, I put a CD on it, or I listen to a record, or I like having digital stuff because I can have it with me out and about. But if I was only choosing one, I think I'd probably choose CD. I'm not so sure about that. That's harder than books. Yeah, I, I do like CDs. I have a decent collection. But like you say, if I'm not allowed to have a MP3 version of it on my phone, I'm only allowed to yeah. have a CDs. My God, yeah. for films, I'd easily go for a Blu-ray over a digital yeah, version. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What about a map versus a sat map? <laughs> I've only got one or two the map, and uh, yeah, like the battery. That's all I could ever have. I mean, I use the sat nav way more than I use a map, but we were. Uh, we went out somewhere near Castle Howard today and went for a walk and the sat nav was just, I mean, just kind of crap, unless, especially because the postcode wasn't for the actual place. The postcode was for a place near it and then there were some directions from there. But yeah. It's much easier if you just have a map. Yeah. The, only, the only trouble with maps is you've got to keep buying them when they redo the roads. Yeah. And it's, 
I mean, in near Castle Howard, it's not so bad because there's bits of interest, but we went for a walk a couple of days ago and it was basically flat. So if you don't pay attention from the start, you'd really struggle to find your position. Yeah. And where we were today, I think there were always things of interest that I could have found where we were on a map. I think I'd have to go sat nav for the, <laughs> the map. It's thing. more useful most of the time, isn't it? I'm just thinking I... Uh, one one thing I've noticed, like I've I've noted it down from all the things we've been talking about here, is this digital versus analog thing. There seems to be a kind of an undercurrent versus of there's like this sense of occasion versus convenience. Oh and yeah, I definitely. Can, I, I can see that with the um, like photography. I can see that uh, not necessarily with film and cinema, because like you know it doesn't affect me in any kind of way it's more convenient for me to watch the <laughs> the digital version of the film rather than to rig up a 35 mil film projector in the living room <laughs> um, you know that just, would be just, while, we're, while we're on film and stuff i watched 1917 oh yeah last night some amazing cinematography in that <laughs> yeah. uh, that, 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 that's all <laughs> i've not seen it yet what is it? Amazon, Netflix? Uh, Amazon. Because <laughs> I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to watch the digital version, having said I'd rather have a blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like that film, like I, I've heard great things about it and I wanted to see it, but I, war movies aren't really my thing. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't want to own it. Yeah. Like Dunkirk. Again, I've seen it. I've not, I, don't, I don't own it. Oh, I do. <laughs> On 4K Blu-ray. Well, I was going to say, you are Mr. Nolan's greatest fan. <laughs> I, I've seen it and I think I enjoy it, but I can't imagine that I would ever choose to watch it again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I might watch 1917 again just to study some of the camera stuff because it is very, very, very cleverly shot. Um, but, yeah. Is it, it is Spielberg, isn't it? 1917, possibly? Thinking of Sam Mendes. Oh yeah, oh, I was thinking. Oh, War Horse was um, Spielberg, wasn't it? Sam Mendes. Oh, James Bond guy. Uh, and other things. Yeah, he he's done lots. Of, he did like the theatre stuff as well. He did like um, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory on the stage in London. <laughs> oh, War Horse at the theatre was brilliant. <laughs> There, there, sense of occasion. Yeah, and it—I mean, that—that that is just better. It's uh, oh, I don't yeah. know if, if the theatre costs the same price as a Blu-ray, then I'd probably go every week. And uh, if it was just that <laughs> easy to—I mean, if it's that easy to get tickets and it costs that price, ah, uh, they—they must offer a subscription kind of service, you know, like a what's it, um, <laughs> yeah. season ticket. <laughs> Every man do for just sixty five thousand pounds a year. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. I don't know how much it is. It's, to, it? it's so it's comfortable, and they bring you food. Yeah. Easy. I've never. I've not been to the Everyman yet. Um, Good. Well, like, when am I going to get a chance? But um, we used to go to a little cinema in Birmingham. It was like down a down a side street alongside oh, yeah. the yeah 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 uh, alongside <laughs> the railway next to the station <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it only had two screens and um it was like only two showings i think per screen per day um because it was so oh, small clean between, they? Uh, <laughs> well they certainly do these days <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's called the electric electric cinema and that's like a proper sense of occasion. Like you, you come in and it, it's 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 done out really nicely. It's not like a modern cinema. It's like an old nineteen twenties kind of deco kind of feel to yeah. it. And you you come in and there's the main lobby and you get a little paper stub, stub. yeah, a little ticket kind of thing that you've paid. And then the person that's doing the stubs through the little window then moves around the corner and they're at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a proper bar and you can have like olives or nachos or all kinds of nibbles and stuff 
and peanuts and things. And then that like it's they ring a little bell when it's showtime, and everybody goes in. You go into your cinema, and there's like it's all comfy sofa seats with little mm. tables and lamps, yeah. <laughs> and you can text your order to the bar and and bring it. I think every man's that's, that's similar brilliant. in that regard. Yeah. Very similar, yeah. 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 Like, I remember we went and saw one of the Harry Potter films there and there's actually an intermission. It came up on the screen, it's like, intermission? It's like, yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> was it, in, like, was it a, like a properly defined place as well? It wasn't just like in the middle of a scene, it just like intermission. It was a, we watched this, we know where to put the intermission. Yeah, no, it was, it was a planned intermission, yeah. I think the film's actually pretty damn long. Mm. But yeah, so in this in this whole kind of sense of occasion versus convenience thing, I can I can get I can get down with the sense of occasion and the analog. It seems to have more of a sense of an occasion than digital. So you can you can make it that way if you want. I'm sure. Oh but yeah, yeah. When it comes to maps, I I don't get any sense of occasion from a physical, real map. I just want convenience when it comes to maps. <laughs> I just... <laughs> There's just times when, uh, when we went to Cornwall last summer, the summer before, uh, the fact that it's just, it, it's not great. It takes you down the tiniest little roads that, that may well be the shortest route, but it's like really horrendous, really steep. You're like, you know, you, you're stuck if you're following someone and you're kind of stuck if you have to pass someone in the opposite direction. So it was much better to use some combination of map and sat nav <laughs> to get you like to just to get yourself onto a reasonable road and then to ignore it whenever it tried to take you down a stupid little side road. Yeah, well, it's like when we used to go out filming. Um, I was the navigator, and I would, I would, I would use the the sat nav capabilities um, to get the general route. But I would be looking at the map, going, "Well, why are we going around that?" Wait, why don't we just go this way? Um, yeah. And then Jack would just ignore my instructions. Look, right. <laughs> Second exit on a roundabout is straight on. It depends how many exits. <laughs> oh, it's just not. Second exits. All roundabouts have four exits. <laughs> straight on the second. Wait, no, one entrance and three exits, sure. Well, once you're on it, it's got four exits. <laughs> well, no, it's got four entrances and four exits. <laughs> oh. we should write this down as a topic for next next week so <laughs> roundabouts people that have people that have made it this far into this podcast will be thrilled to know that next time it's uh, roundabouts and how many exits do they have but yeah so i didn't ignore you i misinterpreted your instructions <laughs> willfully <laughs> it's like i still remember your face like oh what so you're not going that way then. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to go over the toll bridges. Okay, right, that's fine. <laughs> you said second exit. Yes. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> straight on. No, second exit. It's the same thing. I, I agree when the second exit is straight on. I wish the sun would say straight on. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, we won't get into that. Sat, sat now, sat now for convenience. When it's right, you, you must have seen these big compilations, like photos oh, online, yeah. people that followed the sat now. Go straight like, on. There's just one in the field. sea. There's yeah. literally one in the sea. They've gone down the oh. ramp at like Robin Hood's Bay or something. <laughs> okay, here's one for you. Analog versus digital. Kitchen scales. <laughs> oh. mm. Second only to roundabouts in topic. <laughs> so, and now there's two yeah. different analog scales here as well. Mm. So I'm thinking of got... a balance. What, what are the kind of? Yeah. So you've got well, you've got the rotating ones that uh, yeah, like have yeah. a dial or some sort yeah. of physical. Yeah, like a spring and a dial. Yeah. 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 Or you've got the balance ones where you've got to stack the weights on. I feel like they they feel like slightly inconvenient. I've never actually had. Yeah. So I was offered some. So I, I'm in the process of um, buying a house and people keep offering me things. People see it as a great opportunity to get rid of they stuff. Do. They do. <laughs> I've never used. <laughs> You'll like it. I'm not sure I will. Um, so yeah, so I, I really like the idea of 
balance scales. But like you say, they're just a pain in the backside to use. Having said that, maybe there's something really pleasing about you really get a sense of the physical, of the weight of things if you're using a balance. Mm-hmm. More than more than a scale, it's just like it's a number. But if you're using a balance, you really get a proportion like, you know, this many grapes is 100 grams. That's quite a big pile <laughs> of grapes. Or, or, you know, this much butter is 100 grams. That's quite a small bit of butter or, or something. I, I don't know. I feel like maybe, I don't know if that's useful in any way. You could you'd still get that comparison, but I don't know. I think probably the, the inconvenience of the balance would put me off in the end. I like the idea, though. Mm. I have digital ones. That's what I use. <laughs> I would say the need to not replace batteries would be quite a plus, especially if you're just using a spring spring set of scales. But we have a set of digital scales in our house, and they have been saying, telling us to replace the battery <laughs> since before we moved in. And we've been here about six years years now. (laughs) So it has been lying to us for six years that we should replace this battery. And it is still going. So we've got to the point where we're not replacing it. We want to see how long this thing lasts. Now, so you say there's the inconvenience factor of using balances or whatever. I have had to use some horrendous digital scales in my past. (laughs) But there was one that was a two-part thing. So you had one that bit that stayed on the wall where you could put the, the base bit onto there and they linked to each other so that you could always read the scales. With, like you, didn't, you couldn't cover it up with your bowl or whatever. So you couldn't... Like it took like a dozen attempts to get them to link to each other like every time you use them. It's like the most painstakingly difficult set of scales I've ever had to use. So badly designed digital can be a pain in the backside. But I think that applies to to uh, most of the things. Like you say, like you've got a advert advert sponsored ebook reader or whatever. <laughs> I like don't, that's just a yeah. pain. No, I know, but like that's a pain in the backside, isn't it? Every five hundred pages or whatever, you get a new advert. Like it's just uh-huh. yeah. a design decision that was made that makes things more complicated than they need to be. Mm. I feel like it's more common in digital things. That's- Maybe just because they're newer, and that's more common now. So like most of the old things I own, the designs have been really... Or maybe they're the ones that have lasted, I guess. Yeah. That's probably it. Although there's a kind of a sense in the digital realm where it's like the the uh, consumer doesn't actually own the thing anymore. It's like yes. you, you, you're granted access to it. Like Even with uh, like Apple phone, iPhones particularly, is what... Brings to mind. It's probably prevalent across a lot of the brands, but one that comes to mind is Apple. It's like you can't replace, you can't take it to a, a repair shop and get it done. It, oh. it it just doesn't allow it. Like there's that guy that replaced the camera in the new phone, the new 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 phone. Yeah, and it and wouldn't. It, yeah, he literally had two identical new phones, and he swapped the cameras over between them, and they wouldn't work because it's linked. On the on the board, it says this is that camera, and he swapped them back again to prove he'd not broken them, and they worked again. So like the, mm. they're ID'd. It's just to stop third party repair people from doing doing it. Like we don't want people, and they claim it's a security issue. They want to maintain security. It's like, yeah. yeah. So that it's like you get that kind of stuff. Like the films that you buy and download, they're not yours. If you ever move away from the platform, you can't. You have to leave your films behind. Um, like ebooks, like you were saying, it's like with ebooks or films or things like that. If it's suddenly there's a a movement for to say this film or this book is no longer appropriate, we disagree with what it's saying. They can mm. pull it from your ebook, or they could pull it yeah. from your library. And be like, we can't yeah. supply this anymore. It's like, but I bought it. No, you, you, you bought the. It no longer agrees with our ethos. Yeah, that kind of. So it it could be pulled. No. Mm. Uh, yeah. I mean, that feels like a wrapping up kind of area of things. We're just, we're just well, It might do to you, but I'm fairly sure me and Matt have got another three hours of. Uh... Oh yeah, we have barely scratched the surface. <laughs> <laughs> just like a vinyl. So go back to the vinyl. <laughs> I, I, I do. I like records. I mean, I uh, 
I say I, I do. I, I put a record on and listen to it. I don't tend to do that with anything else. And the music on my headphones when I go out and about, I just it's kind of on, but I don't really listen to it in the same way. I, I could with a CD. But... Sense of occasion thing, isn't it? Like I am putting yeah. this on. I am making an effort. I am going to listen to it because I've spent ten minutes getting this record to play. Yeah. <laughs> Cleaning it, <laughs> blow drying it. <laughs> Researching Wait the right... until the Earth's at exactly the right angle. Yeah, researching oh, the right weight of needle I need. <laughs> stylus. Sorry, it's not a needle, is it? It's a stylus. Yeah, yeah. Writing, typing, I'm not sure. I feel like some of the things maybe... I don't know, I was going to say there's more skill to it. I was thinking maybe a map sort of writing it may be useful to be able to write versus typing I, I guess i can write i bet i bet my writing is a lot slower than it used to be because i hardly use a pen at all anymore i don't know that matters if you don't need to then i'd like to be the map read better than i can i, I could read well at one point I, I flick between writing in a notebook and writing on computer I generally jot ideas and things down in a notebook because it's always there and on. And and they're all kind of already organized chronologically for me. <laughs> so I don't need to <laughs> do anything else with it. But yeah. um, being able to work with it then is difficult. But that's kind of why I learned yeah. the touch typing thing. I can now turn it into digital relatively swiftly. Um. Yeah, I, I'll always grab a pen and pencil first when I'm trying to design something. Mm. Yeah, drawing is something I find that, like I, I'm I was all right at CAD at uni, but slow. And, and now I don't have SolidWorks, which is the only one I use for any length of time anymore. I, I tried using Blender a little bit, but it, they've all got quite a high bar to entry. I mean, they're uh, Fusion three hundred and sixty. Say again. Fusion three hundred and sixty. Uh, I was going to design my pizza oven in uh, in CAD before I made it, but uh, I played a little bit, but it's just so so slow, and I didn't really need to, so I didn't. Oof. Right, I'm gonna you're gonna force a wrap up there. I'm gonna force I'm a gonna wrap cut up. up it off. <laughs> well, because I I want I want to get into the pizza oven discussion, but I don't want to record that. People people don't need to know that one just yet. <laughs> Tune in next week. <laughs> well, 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 the <laughs> so, uh, well, my, my my opinion on the analog versus digital is that generally, I think that analog has got this sense of occasion that you would you're doing it for you're doing it for the doing it as well as the final product. Just to throw one quick one in there, it's like getting a letter versus getting an email. Yeah. It feels like someone spent more time doing the letter than will have spent writing an email. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to type it out so I could spell check it. <laughs> <laughs> It'd take less time to, to design my own handwriting as a font, and then I could type it in print. 